Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, so I had put out another video maybe a month or more ago. Actually, maybe like two months ago. I don't know. You can go back and look about updates for the Creep Show series that is coming to Shudder. If people, if this is your first time seeing a video with me or seeing a video with me talk about Shudder, I'm huge on the Shudder streaming service. If you are a horror fan and you don't have Shudder, you must get it now. It is a great value with amazing horror content. And it is a must for actual horror fans, in my opinion. So um, this is another update I'm doing on the Creep Show series that is coming to Shudder. And it's going to be 12 episodes. So they've announced all of the episodes, what the names of them are, and a very small synopsis of what the episodes are. So I'm going to go over that in this uh, video a little bit later. Uh, I'm going to read the title of each one and the small synopsis because I have their um, press release that they sent me. Um, the other big thing is that they announced certain big names of some people who have joined the cast for the show. Uh, the big ones now are Kid Cudi, hip-hop artist. Uh, Jeffrey Combs, very excited about Jeffrey Combs. I love Jeffrey Combs. If you don't know who he is, he was Dr. Herbert West in Reanimator, and he was also in the film Castle Freak. He was in one of the Masters of Horrors, uh, which I did a... a a video reviewing the entire series of Masters of Horror, and I ranked all 26 episodes of that. I'm very proud of that video, and people should definitely check that out, because I put a lot of work into that. It was fun, but I put a lot of work in, and I feel like I did a very good job ranking the episodes. But he was in, Jeffrey Combs was in one of those episodes. Uh, I heard an interview with Jeffrey Combs on the Postmortem podcast by Mick Garris, that's a great podcast, by the way. He just interviews people from the horror industry, like actors and directors and producers and all over the place. And um, Jeffrey Combs is an interesting dude. It was really cool to listen to his uh, interview, so I would recommend that. Uh, then Bruce Davison is getting involved. People would probably know him best from his role in the, the X-Men movie franchise. He was Senator Kelly, Robert Kelly. Um, that's where he's most recognizable from, but... I think on IMDb he had something like 265 acting credits. The guy has been working for a long time and he has chops, so that's cool. DJ Qualls, which people would probably best know him from the movie Road Trip. Yes, the comedy Road Trip with Brecken Meyer and Sean William Scott. Um, so yeah, DJ Qualls, I'm fine with that. I assume he'll have some sort of like comedic-ish role. Unless he's trying to break from that. I don't know. We'll see. And Big Boy. B-O-I, um, from the hip-hop group Outkast. Um, I don't know how to feel about him and Kid Cudi because I don't know what their acting chops are. I know there have been a lot of people in music who have got, gone over to acting, and some of them really work, in my opinion, and some of them really don't work. Um, like, I think Rihanna has done a really good job. Lady Gaga did a really good job. Um, someone, I think, didn't T.I., I don't think he does a very good job with his acting. 50 Cent was terrible. Like, it's a mixed bag. It just depends on who you are. Um, okay, so let's talk about duh, 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 the episodes. Now I'm just going to get into it, and then that's the end of it. So if you want to check out now because you don't want to have anything ruined for you, you don't want to know the titles of the episodes, and you don't want to know the small synopses, um, sign off now. Uh, if you do want to know, let's get into it. Uh, All Hallows' Eve is the first one, written by Bruce Jones, directed by John Harrison. Even then, they're a little too old. This group of friends still want to trick-or-treat, but getting candy isn't all they are looking for. That sounds good to me. Oh, by the way, this is the first time I'm reading these. So I'm reacting live, like right now as I go through these. I'm reacting to these like you probably are. Um, so that one sounds interesting. I like anything having to do with Halloween, so I'm in. Uh, Bad Wolf Down. Written by Rob Schraub and directed by Rob Schraub. Uh, a group of American soldiers trapped behind enemy lines during World War II finds an unconventional way to even the odds. Okay, that sounds interesting. That could go either way because with me and mixture of horror and like war films, it's got to be the right mixture. It has to work a certain way. Uh, and by the way, Rob, Rob, ooh, sorry, I had a back spasm. Uh, that's what happens when you get old people. Rob Schraub, by the way, I believe is involved in the podcast Fear Initiative that's through the Blumhouse Podcasting Network. Um, and that's a fun, like, if you're into tabletop gaming, like Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, stuff like that, uh, it's a lot of fun. And he's a lot of fun on that show, by the way. So Rob Schraub, if you end up seeing this for some reason, I'm a fan. I like it. 
uh, by the Silver Water of Lake Champlain. This one is story by Joe Hill, adapted by Jason Cimarella or Chimarella, and directed by Tom Savini. Some good names there. Her dad died looking for the monster living at the bottom of Lake Champlain, and now will she? Um, that one seems a little too vague for me to be interested or not. I usually do like things having to do with water, like water exploration. In my opinion, some of the coolest things on planet Earth are deep, deep, deep sea uh, creatures. So that one could be good. The Companion, story by Joe R. Lansdale, Casey Lansdale, and Keith Lansdale, adapted by Matt Venn and directed by Dave Bruckner, who did The Ritual, which I saw on Netflix. The Ritual was a very good film. Uh, one of the more unique creature feature films in the sense of what the creature is. It was very unique. Uh, so I, I recommend that on Netflix. Uh, a young boy bullied by his older brother sneaks into an abandoned farm that is protected by a supernatural force. I see a little bit of overlap with the ritual, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, sounds intriguing. The Finger, written by... David J. Show, who wrote The Crow, apparently, directed by Greg Nicotero, who Greg Nicotero is the showrunner for this. People will most know him recently from his uh, directing that he's done with The Walking Dead. An unhappy man discovers a severed inhuman appendage on the street and brings it home, where it grows into a loyal companion with some deadly quirks. That sounds really nutty. <laughs> that sounds like crazy nutty, but I like it. I like how that sounds. That could be really awesome. Uh, Gray Matter, story by Stephen King, adapted by Byron Willinger and Philip de Blasi, also directed by Greg Nicotero. Doc and Chief, two old-timers in a small dying town, brave a storm to check on Richie, an alcoholic single father, after encountering, encountering his terrified son at the local convenience store. The story, first published in 1973, is part of King's best-selling 1978 collection, Night Shift. So I haven't read, I haven't actually read any Stephen King stuff, so that'll be new to me. I know people are like, oh my god, you haven't read any Stephen King? At some point I will, I'm sorry. Um, but that one sounds interesting. The House of the Head, written by Josh Mallerman, who I am a fan. He wrote Bird Box, if people didn't know. I'm a fan of Josh Mallerman, I've read a bunch of his books. Directed by John Harrison. Evie's... Evie discovers her new doll house might be haunted. That has a lot of good potential. Creepy dolls, demonic dolls, something like that. That has a lot of potential. Lydia Lane's Better Half. Story by John Harrison and Greg Nicotero. Adapted by John Harrison. Directed by Roxanne Benjamin, who did Body at Brighton Cro Rock. I don't know that one. Uh, a powerful woman denies a promotion to her protege and lover, but fails to anticipate the fallout. That could be like a revenge type thing. All right, sounds like it could be good. It's not a whole lot to jump into there. The Man in the Suitcase. Interesting. That's an interesting title. Written by Christopher Buhlman, directed by Dave Bruckner, the guy who did Ritual, and did another one of these. Uh, a college student brings the wrong bag home from the airport only to find a pretzeled man trapped inside, afflicted by a strange condition that turns his pain into gold. Oh, that sounds like a really interesting concept. Okay, I'm very intrigued with that one. Night of the Paw, uh, written by John Esposito, directed by John Harrison. A lonely mortician finds company in the ultimate be careful what you wish for story. Okay, very vague, so I don't really know what to think. So, we'll see. Skin Crawlers, written by Paul Dini and Stephen Langford, directed also by Roxanne Benjamin. A man considers a miraculous new treatment for weight loss that turns out to have unexpected complications. Once again, kind of vague. I'd have to see where they're going with that, so I don't know. And then the final one, Times is Tough in Musky Holler. Written by John Skip and Dory Miller based on their short story. Uh, directed by John Harrison again. Leaders who once controlled a town through fear and intimidation get a taste of their own medicine. Oh, that sounds fun. I, I like those kind of like revenge ones where like the real bad guys get what's coming to them. Like the bad human beings, like people who are normal people, but they've been doing terrible things and then they get their just desserts in the end. So that one sounds fun. So yeah, so that's it. Um, are you excited for this? Let's put some comments down here and talk about it. How excited on a scale of one to 10 are you for the Creepshow series? I personally 
Um, okay, I'm, you know, I'm not big on just saying everything like, I'm at a 10, I'm at a 10. I'm probably at like an 8, between maybe 8, 8.5. I'm pretty excited for this. I'm pretty excited for this. Um, I think it could be really awesome. I really like anthology style things. So the fact that this is like anthology, each episode is its own story, much like Masters of Horror, which I've done a review on. Um, and you should check that out. Do it. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be cool, in my opinion. I mean, it's pretty much got to be. With all the names, like the actual writers who are involved in that, and that's one of the best things, is they didn't just get people who were like, oh, I can write a script and direct it. They got legitimate horror writers for a bunch of these episodes and then use their material. That gives a lot of hope to me for the series. So anyway, I'm excited. Tell me your thoughts on it down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Hit that subscribe, pretty, pretty please. It can mean a lot for my channel, and it is very painless for you. It takes like a second. So anyway, thank you very much. Spread the word about this channel if you like it. And until next time, keep it brutal.